Hey guys, I'm Angela and welcome back to Hobby Night. This week I'm going to be painting up a squig hog boy, but not in the colors you might expect. That's right, you heard correctly. We're not going with the standard green skins today because I've done that tutorial a number of times and while I do love it, I wanna add a bit more variety into my orc list. So I went to Patreon, put up a poll for my patrons to vote on and had them pick out some wild colors for me to paint on the squig hog boy. And what they chose, I'm actually incredibly excited for. So the squig is going to be a lucky blue. The orc is going to be orange and the goblin that goes with them is going to be yellow. I actually have some really cool ideas for this. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get painting these models. Let's go ahead and get started with our squig, our little lucky blue squig. Now I'm going to be going from a dark blue into a mid-tone blue into a light blue, but I'm going to do this gradually so that I can get a smooth transition. And the first color that I'm going to start with is Leviathan Blue Contrast Paint, because this is not only going to function as a base color, but it's also going to function a little bit as a shade as Contrast likes to do. Once I have this color down and it's thoroughly dried so that it's not going to accidentally smudge or pull any color out, of any of those recessed areas, because I've had that happen before with dry brushing, we're gonna move on to actually dry brushing the model in some mid-tones, starting with McCrag Blue. I picked this because I wanted something that still was relatively dark, but still had a little bit of a brighter blue color tone, and I actually think McCrag works really well for that. It also has this slight, like, violet undertone, which I really enjoy. Once the McCrag Blue is down and we do a little bit of a heavier dry brush with that, we're going to move on to Thousand Suns Blue, which is one of my all-time favorite blue color tones. I probably talked a little bit about it in my previous video where I painted some Necrons. We're going to bring it back here because I just really like it. That just like zap of color that's there really speaks to me. So we're going to apply this next to our squig and then after that, we're going to move on to Aramin Blue, which is the natural complement to Thousand Suns. And again, because I wanted to build this up gradually, I'm going to add this transitional color in before we go to our final highlight color, which is going to be a bit of Skink Blue. Again, we're gonna stick with this blue scheme, but this time we're going a little bit more icy. Now, the thing that I wanna call out here with the Skink Blue is I don't clean my brush in between doing the Aramin and the skink. So the two colors end up mixing together, which does mean that I need to do two passes with this color tone to really get the highlights I'm wanting, especially on the face, as well as some of the like scars that are on the model. Cause I really wanna make those accent and pop out so that they're really vivid and bright. Let's move on now to our orange orc. For this, we're going to do a similar technique to what we did on the squig, except we're going to be going with an orange color palette. And our starting color is going to be Griff Hound Orange, which is another contrast paint. And we're gonna use it for the exact same reason. It's a little bit darker. It's gonna go into those recessed areas really well. And I just love this color. I use it all the time on my Death Guard as their trim to sort of do a rusty color tone. And because it's so pumpkin-y and it is the season for pumpkins to still be around, that is what I decided to name him. Now, once we've got the Griff Hound Orange on, we're going to go ahead and move on to a highlight color using Troll Slayer Orange. It's a similar color that we used in our Necron video, and I just really like how bright, but sort of subdued it still is, because we're gonna push this color even further with a final highlight using a little bit of the Master Series paint called Marigold Yellow. Now, this is still a little bit of a yellow tone, like technically, but it leans orange. It's got a little bit more of a yellow-orange color, and I think that works really well here because I didn't want my highlight to be a true yellow since that's what we're doing on our goblin. This is a nice complement to it. I think it works incredibly well. And again, I go over with two passes with this color, especially on the face and knuckles of the orc because I want to accent those the most. Let's work now on that little gobbo because he is adorable and he needs to be yellow. So what we're actually going to do is start with a bit of Nasdreg yellow. This is a little bit of a brownish yellow tone, but I think it's going to work beautifully as my shade base color combo for this goblin. And it really, really does. Once it's down and it's had the time to dry, we're gonna start dry brushing. And for that, we're going to first start with Averlin Sunset, which is a little bit more of an ochre color tone, which complements with those brown hues that the Nasdreg has beautifully. Then once we're done with that, we're going to do a lighter dry brush with Uriel Yellow, that really bright lemony yellow color tone that I've been using a lot. And I absolutely adore how this works out. He's very, very yellow and it's perfect. I love him. 
Hello, Imperial Citizen. This is your regular reminder to subscribe to the channel and hit the Emperor's bell for notifications. And if you're feeling particularly devout, you can join my Patreon where you'll get exclusive unboxings, behind the scenes content, and more. Now, let's go ahead and get back to the video. All of my creatures' flesh is looking awesome and I'm very, very pleased with them. I've done a slight off-camera cleanup stage using Wraith Bone to tidy up all the bits that I need to have painted still. And we're going to now move on to the leathers. And we're gonna stick with a pretty classic color palette here, starting with snake bite leather, which is going to go on all of the major big portions of leather on the models. It's gonna go on all the big straps of the saddle. It's gonna go on the big straps that are on the orc himself. And then it's also going to be used on the pants of the goblin. Because he has those rockets, bombs, like gun things, I wanted to make sure he was protected. So I gave him leather breeches so that he would get that extra protection. Safety first, guys. Then we're gonna move on to my newest favorite brown contrast paint, which is Fire Slayer Flesh. I used it on my Ogre a little while ago, and I absolutely adore the color. I think it complements with snake bite leather really well, which is why I want to explicitly use it on the patterned seat of the saddle. I'm also going to put it on a couple of the wraps that go on the orc, as well as some of his weapons, just to add a little bit more variety. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and move on to our final brown tone, which is Dark Oath Flesh. This is primarily going to go on the shoe of the orc that he doesn't have for the mechanical leg. And then it's also going to go on any remaining straps that I haven't already painted, just to make, again, have a little bit more variety. The final color we're going to use in this section before we move on is Militarum Green, because that is part of my snake bite color scheme. And I wanted to go ahead and add that color to my orc's outfit rather than to his armor as much. So we're going to paint his pants up using this. And I also decided to make all of the ties that are um, holding all the detonation cord on all of the dynamite that's all over all of them, also in this color to imply that it's straw, so they'll just burn away as they explode and not interrupt anything that goes on with their weapons. Next up, I want to put a bit of Vulpus Pink in their open screaming maws because both the orc and the squig have these big open mouths. You can see their tongues and everything. And I really think that's cute and they need some paint. And I really don't like to use blood angels or flesh terrors for this because it always ends up making their mouths look really bloody. So we're going to put Volupus Pink instead inside there. Then we're also going to thin this color down a little bit and apply it to all the scars that both the squig and the orc have as well, including, well, these aren't scars specifically, but we're also going to dot the orcs in with this just because I've really enjoyed doing that. I think it's funny and we're going to keep up the trend. Now it's everybody's favorite part of the video where we pull out Basilicanum Gray and apply it to everything that we want to look sort of iron or metal because that is how I roll. I really, really like using Basilicanum as a non-metallic metal. I think it works really nicely for it. And we're gonna apply this to the jaw, any mechanical limbs that anybody has, all of the weapons, and make sure that anything that looks like it should be metallic gets a coating of this color. We're down to just the details and we've got a couple of them to go over. So let's run through them really quick. First, we're gonna start with a bit of Blood Angels Red. This is gonna go on any of the cords that you might see sticking out of, out of any of their weapons, as well as on the casings of all the bombs that go boom on all of their weapons, because I wanna identify them as dangerous. We're also going to put this color on a few places on some of their armor, just to add a little bit of variety and flavor so that it's not all just one flat gray color tone. Then we're going to move on to Militarum Green, which I'm going to apply to a couple of details on the Squig's armor because he's already got blue skin, which is part of my snake bite color scheme. So I wanted to have a little bit of green on him as well. This is a perfect opportunity to do so. Then in basically kind of reverse, my orc already has a little bit of green on him. So we're going to actually pull out Ultramarine Blue now. I almost forgot what color I used. Ultramarine Blue and paint that on his armor to again, pull in that blue color tone for my snake bites. I love how this works with them. I think it pulls just enough in, but that's not all we have to do. We need to pull out Yondan Yellow for their eyes. We're going to dot both the squig and the orc's eyes with this. We did do um, the goblin with red. And then we need to pull out some Black Templar because any of the detonation cords or, in a, or any of the wires that I haven't already painted, I'm gonna do up in black, just to have them sort of mute back down and not really be super visible, but still be distinctly different from anything that we painted gray. The final color that we need to do before we move on to a wash is going to be pulling out snake hoard, or snake hoard, skeleton hoard. I don't know what the heck my brain was thinking. We're going to pull out 
skeleton hoard and apply that to any of the teeth, nails, or bones that are on the model. And then we can just move on to a wash. And that wash is going to be a bit of Agra's Earthshade. We're going to apply this to all of the different pieces of the model before we assemble them, just to make sure we get really good coverage. And just, I love what this does to all of the figures. It just sits into the recesses really well, it enhances their skin, all the highlights suddenly pop more, and it just looks beautiful. So let's get them assembled, put them on a base, and take a look at the final model. And here he actually they are and can i just say i am so happy like okay the biggest thing that has me the most pleased about these models is the fact that i actually feel like they fit with the army exceptionally well despite the fact that they don't actually share that much of the color palette of the rest of the orcs. Everything that I've done with my army so far has been primarily green skins, like traditional green skins, or I've done a few like yellow colored orc flesh, kind of actually what I did on my goblin, um, but pushing, I pushed the goblin a little bit further. I love the orange skin on that orc. I just, I don't know if it's just the combination of colors that I did between the troll slayer and the marigold, color from Master Series Paint, or if it's just like the new sculpts, or just the fact that I must apparently really like Orange, but I just love him. His name is Pumpkin, Max Pumpkin, and the squig's name is Blue the Blue Squig, and that's Blue spelled B-L-O-O. -O. I just, I love these little guys. I haven't named the Goblin yet. I've had some names bouncing around, but I haven't actually named him yet, which is why I'm not calling it out here yet. But. I really, really, really like these guys. I'm going to absolutely be painting some more orcs with the orange flesh tone. I'm going to definitely be painting more squigs with some of the other options I think I gave to my patrons because I do like all of the color schemes. And I think now that I have the proof of concept of this actually works with the army, as long as I keep some consistencies there, like the leather tones, the snake bite color scheme and everything, I think, I think I can make it work and then I can have this like rainbow of just squigs and it's gonna be amazing. I'm so excited. Let me know what you guys thought of this down below. I had an absolute blast with it. I wanted to give a huge thank you to my patrons for supporting us and helping me pick this color scheme because I had so much fun with it, you guys. Thank you so much. We'll be getting a new poll up relatively soon. Just need to figure out what I'm going to have you guys vote on. But in the meantime, I have been Angela. I will see you guys next week for some more news, as well as another painting tutorial or some other hobby content. And don't forget that this Sunday there will not be a normal news video. I'm taking it off for the holiday weekend because I'm visiting with my parents. So it's going to be awesome. Anyways, see you guys later. Bye.